Hello, my name is Dante Rene, and welcome to the 10 Room Bizarro YouTube page where I talk about films that I believe need to be talked about more. Like tonight's film, this is 1978's Super Soul Brother. It says, Wild Man Steve is Super Soul Brother. This is put out by Vinegar Syndrome um, as part of the American Genre Film Archive's 35mm theatrical print, so in coordination with the AGFA. This is the back of the very rare and unknown movies disc right here. And on the top right there, it says he's sexy, he's bionic, he's a stud, Super Soul Brother. Um, this is directed by Rene Martinez. And this is such a rare and unknown black exploitation and beyond type of film here, folks. Super Soul Brother. Now, the alternate title for this film is The $6,000 Nigger. So it looks like uh, Super Soul Brother is an alternate title, but the title card, actually, the actual title card when you push play on this film is The $6,000 Nigger. Um, now... This is a film that really pushes beyond the typical uh, genre tropes of a black exploitation film. Not only is it rare, unknown, and low budget, I mean, not even close to the likes of films like Dolomite or Foxy Brown or things like that. This is a film that really kind of pushes past um, the black exploitation genre, which was always very, very uh, wide open and boundaryless. If you really think about some of the Dolomite films that even brought in the occult and things like that. Um, and this film really does do that as well as, you know, we have a lot of different things getting mashed up in the blender here, which just make the film just so beautiful. So here's my video praise for Super Soul Brother. Let's get into this film. I have lots of notes here. You'll see my eyes divert. Let's enter in. You know, as soon as this movie starts, you're, uh, you're sucker punched. Because you're sucker punched because all of a sudden you, um, you hear elegant piano music. And that's not something that you were typically ready for for a film called Super Soul Brother or The $6,000 Nigger. Elegant piano music? Really? You know, I mean, this really interesting stuff here. And then we see a midget doctor with a foreign accent. Um, and he's a, a white midget doctor with a foreign accent. He's a German, I'm not exactly sure. And he's talking about a new serum uh, something scientific, scientific experiment. Um, and what is this experiment for? What is this serum for? You will find out as the movie develops, which is very interesting the way they keep the viewers really kind of uh, on their toes. Um, and there's a great line that one of the characters says when this nurse of sorts at the scientific lab walks in the room and they say, did you see that girl? Yeah, I saw her wide ass. <laughs> um, it's very interesting genre mashup of black exploitation with uh, kind of a with kind of like a sci-fi film, science fiction um, lab experimental type of film. We also have some light, airy funk music in here as well, and. Um, Another interesting thing is we have some real shots of the inner city in this film. Um, look like real locations, uh, really there in the nitty gritty of the inner city. Um, and it looks legit and it's, it's just, um, I mean, you couldn't pay for a set to look like this. I mean, it's, it's that legit. Um, we have on the side, outside in the inner city, and this is something that's really, really interesting. We have these these really nice ads on the outside wall, you know, advertising liquor products and things like that with beautiful models. And there's a wino toasting to one of the ads outside in the inner city there. And it was a really interesting dichotomy as you have these beautiful people on the ads outside and we have a wino um, looking at the sophisticated alcohol ad on the side of the building while he is is um, drinking himself to death, um, living on the streets and looking up at this million dollar model who's up on the wine ad there. Uh, very, very interesting stuff. We have real construction happening outside here as well, um, which the camera will show. Uh, construction or, or, or deconstruction is happening outside. The interesting thing is that we also have um, doctor like, um, like really, like a like a documentary, really documentary like 
dialogue outside in the city as people are sitting on like broken pieces of furniture and um it just feels like a documentary it feels like you're watching something nitty gritty some indie film some low some you know some low budget indie film even today you know in 2017 and you're entering into the to the real street life um and so you have that kind of dialogue there and there's graffiti everywhere um there's a there's a kind of a group beat down a gang beat down outside um and the lead of this film who who the his picture's on the back here this is actually him up here okay it's hard look at the glare here okay the lead of this film you know he also uh he has some some black exploitation type of lead uh traits as well but um What's interesting, too, is the, the dialogue in here, as he says he's looking for a beat-down nigger, um, a wino, a worthless person out on the streets, and um, a worthless black person out on the streets. And this is very, very interesting stuff here with the dialogue, because that's who he's looking for to do this scientific experiment on. But why? Why is there an experiment? You'll find out. Um, there's a fine line in this film with comedy with the wino on the street. Sometimes you can sense that comedy breaking through amidst the documentary-like grit, grime, sadness, and um, kind of bleakness. You can sense some of that comedy there. I mean, even at the beginning of the, 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 the movie with um, the, 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 the foreign uh, midget scientist, and you can kind of sense some of that. And we have a lot of dialogue. It's dialogue-driven when we're in the science lab, which is really um, just a unique quality, hearing the characters talking here. Now, in this film, we have bribery, we have lies, and we have redemption. We have a maid hooker, Okay, a hooker dressed up as a maid. Um, attractive, this is, this is a really interesting line here. Attractive women don't normally know how to cook. That's an interesting line here. Um, and we, <laughs> you know, that, and that uh, fat women uh, know better, you know, how to cook. Or, or fat, ugly women know better how to cook. Um, we, we kind of have this interesting piece of comedic... Uh, comedic resonance here where um a character is wanting food over sex or at least initially um and the way that that kind of plays out um this character wants his butt washed i believe like his mother used to do it and we also have some dialogue driven um scenes in a hotel room as well and so this is a film that's rich with dialogue and um very uh, Interesting, fascinating, and outrageous dialogue at that, um, especially uh, for our modern times of 2017. And the wino in the film, the dialogue, um, you know, there's like this, um, there's this, this rhythm um, over the top, like, there's a, there's a, there's this, the way people say Tarantino kind of has a rhythm to his dialogue, there's kind of like a rhythm um, to the dialogue um, of this lead wino who gets redemption, who's getting this, the, the, the experiment put on him. There's a rhythm to his dialogue, and it's kind of over the top. It's comedy-like. Uh, it kind of has that vibe like he's a real comedian. And if his name is Wild Man Steve, I haven't done much research on him. It sounds like he probably, um, you know, probably is. Put some comments down below if you know more about him. But there's definitely a vibe that he's a comedian. Um... There's an element in the storyline where a character uh, has paid uh, for sex and has also paid um, women, uh, he, you know, he, he's paid for sex and he's also paid for violence towards women. Um, and uh, so there's, uh, there, there's those elements as well kind of in the, in the, uh, in the sex world. Uh, there. Uh, we have silence in this movie. It's not always music. We have silence. And as I said, it's dialogue driven. So you're going to get a lot of dialogue in the film and you're just going to hear the natural sounds around. Um, there's a, a kind of a surprise in this movie involving the wino and the nurse in the film. Um, kind of a, a, 
a direction the plot takes that I was not expecting whatsoever. Um, <laughs> there's a great line talking about a get high tree. A get high tree. Yes, what do you think that is? Um, if you're caught with a joint in your mouth, you better make sure it has two balls at the end of it. Uh, this was a really interesting line of dialogue about the system and about how uh, homosexuality is legal, but marijuana is not. Yes, the get high tree is not. So, uh, so some wild, like I said, some comedic type lines like that. We got some nasty funk in here as well with some bass slapping, bass slapping nasty funk in here as well. Um, some of the words used in here, we got the, uh, the word faggot, we got the word bull dyke, um, which you'll actually hear bull dyke um, a couple times, I believe, in the Two Live Crew album, As Nasty As They Wanna Be, um, if you're familiar with that album. So if you've heard that phrase before, you'll hear it in this film as well. We also have some interesting emotional synthesizer in this film as well, which, which really took me off guard. Um, very atmospherically emotional synth. Um, and uh, a character saying it's his lucky day to get a girl's cherry, to get a cherry, uh, to get a virgin. Um, and really uh, an interesting element of the seduction of uh, two different class levels. Uh, the seduction of two different class levels um, in the film. That is something that is also a theme. Uh, people from different walks of life... Um, coming together and even changing together as well. Um, we have a surprise topless uh, shot from a, a, what I mean is a person that I would not have expected to be topless. Um, you get it right there. Whoa. We get uh, tidy whities on a guy. And um, we have another great line here. Uh, Every time I look at your titties, they remind me of windshield wipers. Um, that's right. And he will actually show you physically what he means by that. Uh, so that is a, that's a pretty wild uh, little line there. Um, we have some harsh back and forth edit cuts in this film as well, which I think are great. They're real rough. They're real hard. You know, bam, bam, bam. Just, just cutting between people. It's not smooth. Um, we have a, a, a section of the film where the midget is with a big boobed woman. And uh, she wants pasties and a car. And there's uh, lots of jokes about the midget uh, being a midget. Um, talking about him being a dwarf. Um, the big boob... Here's an interesting thing. The big boobed woman sounds like the lead uh, fiancé in the old black and white film Freaks. She kind of sounds exactly like her. It's almost as if it is her. You know, it's really weird. Um, so if you've seen the original black and white film Freaks, um, kind of the woman who's going to get married to the guy who's now cheating on her with like a normal size uh, woman in the film, it sounds like her. It sounds like the lead, you know, uh, blonde uh, midget in Freaks. And we got some jazzy, funk, city background music in this film as well. You know, jazzy and funky, and it sounds like the city is breathing. Um, and, uh, you know, the element of money and greed is in this film as well. And um, we have some weird noise in this film, some weird soundscapes in this movie. And uh, very, very um, funky rhythms uh, moving through this film. Um, superhuman strength is something that is looked at in the storyline. Yes, almost a superhero film right here. Um, we got crime. Uh, we have a interesting uh, scene with a jewelry store and... Um, we have uh, these, these white people kind of running the, the jewelry store, and there is one of the most hilarious heists in a jewelry store uh, that I've seen in, 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 in cinema for a while. It's, and that, that's what I said. There's a fine line with comedy here, but it's not really pushed in your face because it's in the world of an exploitation film. Um, we have... Um, <laughs> it's so interesting because this is a black exploitation film, but we also have... Um, white characters and even like a white lead character and we also have characters with foreign accents so how many black exploitation films have you seen like that uh not many for me at least um this is a great line that a guy says diamonds are a girl's best friend but not mine <laughs> 
We even got some disco vibes in this movie as well. Uh, there's an amazing car driving shot um, on a dirt road. Um, it's really kind of like one of the only times you really get out, you know, in a car in the movie and um, or get beyond the city where you're kind of in some vegetation. And it's just a great dusty road shot, dirt road shot. Um, we start to uncover the story as the movie goes on. We really start to uncover the story and we really start to see some twists happening in Super Soul Brother. We got some jammy jazz. Uh, what I mean is just like some, almost as if the Grateful Dead was jamming out here. Uh, we got some jazz that's really kind of breathing and, and moving around with instrumentation and uh, letting the vibes flow. Um, we have a, uh, another quote here where somebody says, God damn, uh, this nigger is bulletproof. Um, we got some darker music in here as well involving an organ. Yes, very interesting on that. And lots of artwork in the film on the walls. Uh, keep your eyes peeled for artwork, um, African artwork. And it looks like it's from one particular artist. And one of the characters actually mentions that artwork in one of the scenes. Um, we have, this film is almost an axe. You know, in, in Act 1, Act 2, it almost feels like that because we have a twist, and then we have another twist, and then we have another twist, and the twists keep coming, the sucker punches keep coming in true, beautiful exploitation fashion. Um, this film's climax, really, when you think it's over, it's not. When you think it's over, it's not. And another twist happens. Very, very cool. We have a very windy day near the end of this film as well. Um, we got gunplay. And we have a character with the title of the film on his shirt, the $6,000 nigger, on his shirt. And then at the end of the movie, written on the screen, it says, this nigger is coming back. Now, I'm not exactly sure. Um, I don't believe, I don't know if there was ever a real sequel to this film, um, but very, very interesting right there. And breaking the fourth wall happens at the end of this movie. There's a freeze frame at the end of this movie. And the last song in the closing credits of this film sounds like a kid singing. It sounds like a, is it disco? I'm not sure, but it's almost like weirdly disturbing. It sounds like a, like a little kid singing the song, like straight, you know, like it's not meant for laughs. It sounds like it's, you know, sung. And I think that's the main song in the film, in the, or at least in the menu screen of the film. Um, and then we kind of close the movie with the type of credits where you have each character and their name you know, underneath of them. I always love either opening credits or closing credits like that because it just brings an element of cinematic fun um, or power uh, to the movie. Uh, so this is Super Soul Brother, uh, title card, The $6,000 Nigger, and uh, $6,000, that, that's actually, the title card uh, title is actually, I believe, the better title for the film because it really... Th $6,000 is actually a humongous part of this movie. This is a black exploitation film that is going to challenge you on, a, on, on, on some different levels here. It's unique. It's um, sexy. It's weird. Um, it has elements of crime and comedy. And it, it's constantly moving. And some great twists... Um, some violence, uh, some sci-fi or scientific experiments. Um, so very, very interesting stuff, and even a superhero film, which is where the alternate title Super Soul Brother, I guess, comes into play. So this is Super Soul Brother from 1978 right here, folks. This is quite a unique black exploitation film, very rare, very unknown, and here it is, folks. Thank you so much, Vinegar Syndrome, and thank you, uh, I think I paid... How much was that? Probably 15 bucks, something like that. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you so much for watching the 10 Room Bizarro YouTube page where I talk about films that I believe need to be talked about more, like Super Soul Brother. Thank you so much, and good night.